I'm super excited to talk about your documentary that you came here to speak about. Um, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching it. I would love if you could just kind of introduce the documentary itself and just your introduction to the topic as well. Yeah, so Yes I Am, The Rick Weiland Story is about a gentleman named Rick Weiland who was a queer pioneer, uh, a philanthropist. I think one of the, the largest philanthropists in the world, especially giving to LGBTQ uh, organizations, places like ACT UP and GLAAD, even before they were anything. Rick was this person behind the scenes. Um, he was one of three that started Microsoft. It was Bill Gates, Paul Allen, and Rick Weiland, and he wanted to, they wanted to make him a third partner and he declined. And instead he went down this philanthropic path of really helping people behind the scenes, but also not wanting the recognition for it either. Uh, sort of this angel investor. And, uh, but also someone who, who suffered greatly his entire life from anxiety and depression and things that a lot of queer people go through. Um, so it's, I think reconciling that for himself was always something that uh, he was trying to do, uh, trying to make himself feel better. Um, so what was, sorry, what was the second part of your question? <laughs> I mean, when people think of Microsoft, they think of the names you listed, like Paul Allen and Bill Gates, and not many think of Rick. So I just want to know just how you found him and then why, yeah. you know, what drew yeah. you to him? Yeah. So after I finished my last feature in 2016 called Finding Kim, uh, I got to premiere it at the Seattle International Film Fest. And I had this gentleman uh, approach me named Michael Fela in the audience who is actually in the film is one of Rick's best friends. And, you know, you're at film, you're at a film festival and you're having all these sort of like three minute conversations and people coming at you. And he approached me and said, Hey, I have this idea uh, about a doc for a documentary about a friend of mine named Rick. And I said, sure, but why don't you go ahead and email me? And uh, most people, you know, never do or follow up, but uh, Michael did. And, that was August of 2016. And I went over to Michael's house to sort of get to know who Rick was as a friend to Michael. And uh, that was just sort of the tip of the iceberg. And just from Michael's perspective of having this friend and that uh, someone who also affected his life in so many ways. Um, but then I had to really sit down with myself and think, is this a story I want to tell? Is this a story that I can tell authentically? Uh, and the more I got to know Rick, the more I realized that I wanted to, and I had to tell his story. Uh, and naively I thought that this would take a year. Um, and, uh, what I quickly realized uh, after sort of the discovery phase of, of Rick is that he was such a hidden person on purpose. And it was almost like cracking open a cold case because so many people, different people from different parts of his life had like bits of information and he never gave any interviews ever like the the content and the video that you see within the film that is of him that's the only thing that I could find within five years and that was a complete fluke or just a happy accident he remained anonymous on purpose because he wanted he didn't want this limelight and he didn't want the recognition um which was fascinating considering how how much money he gave away it is staggering to think about how much money he he gave and to help to actually help queer organizations how has that experience of going from creating it to now releasing it been for you it's always uh huh. it's it's when you finish a film you think 
there's this moment that you have to where you sort of think I'm done, but you actually aren't done. You, a documentary like this, you have to continue to give it love. You release it into the world and folks start to respond to it. And it's up to the filmmaker. And I don't, I don't have this huge crew of people to help with like marketing and things like that. So it's, like you sort of become this you sort of shift your focus a little bit and you start talking about your film and how that manifests in the world. Uh, what you initially sort of started out thinking it was going to be shifts, evolves and changes over the course of time. And um, what I've realized, I'm at a moment right now with the film that it's, it's getting, it's resonating with so many people and it's kind of everything that I wanted it to be. So I'm in a place where I'm really trying to, to give it love and to, uh, and to let it shine in the, in the best way. That's it's like, even beyond me is like, as a filmmaker, it sort of like lives beyond me as a person. I love that. And I love that it was started in 2016, right around there. And then I, I do feel that now people would be more like, resonating with it and this is just kind of a really great time here in 2021 for it to have come out it was the the perfect time for it to come out this year because i i kept trying to sort of force it to come out in 2020 but i had all of these things sort of having to wrap up with it and as the world works and as thing as life happens it just it worked out so perfectly that it came out after you know this election and it came out in a time to where people people need content like this especially queer people need to see content like this of you know even though rick he tried so hard to to be happy and ultimately his his own despair got the best of him his his story is still inspiring even to me like this film and i say it all the time it's like rick changed my life in so many ways as a filmmaker and as a human being and how I carry myself in this world and how I treat other people too. And just going off of that, I mean, like you said, like he didn't want the recognition, but he made such a big difference in where we are today in these organizations. I mean, it wasn't just giving money. It was, you know, finding a cure for AIDS and looking into research and things like that. So, I mean, what made you want to tell that story, even though that's not really what he was thinking he had in mind in his lifetime of having people know. It's, it's the, you know, it, within queer history, there are these people that we don't know about and they don't get the recognition that they deserve. And 30, 40, 50 years later, they finally get their due. And, you know, these, you see, documentaries and series and like, how did I never know about this person and what the motivation behind making this film was and still is, is how, how did I not know this person? And I get that a lot. I get people asking me that a lot saying, how did I not know about this person? And it's, it is because he wanted to, to just stay behind, behind the scenes. And uh, it was, Something I had to think about and I asked his partners and friends, would Rick want me to be telling this story considering he was, you know, so behind the scenes and uh, didn't want recognition? And the answer was always yes, because it's at this point in, the, in life where people like this deserve to be known. And I think Rick would feel very proud of the story that I told about him. And on top of just, you know, the money that he gave and who he was, like he also was just a very proud gay man, which wasn't a very common thing, I would say. It's still not a very common thing to be able to say, like there's a journal entry where he just is gay and he doesn't really mind that. And that, you know, even at the time, that was a big deal, right? It was a big deal and it, it still kind of is a head scratcher for me because out of all of the things Rick suffered from, 
being gay was not one of them. It was just sort of this matter of fact to him and being out so early on, like in the late seventies and being out in this mostly like cis straight world and tech was just becoming a thing. And he was this out and proud gay man. I mean, the, his license plate, the film is called yes, I am because he had this vanity license plate put on his car that says, yes, I am. And you can, people can think what they want to about that, but it's pretty obvious. And Rick, when he went out to, when he went to work, he was sort of this one person, but then when he had this very uh, social life uh, and this group, this core group of friends here in Seattle that uh, he would go out and he would go out hard. And during your research, I mean, your, your years of research and looking through his personal journals and speaking with people he knew, was there anything that surprised you about him or that his story? Good question. Uh, trying to think of like a very truthful answer here. Um, the thing that I think surprised me the most was the thing that surprised me the most after reading his journals, talking to friends was the fact that he was only certain type, he was only a certain type of person with certain types of people. It was like very compartmentalized and going around and meeting different friends and colleagues, they were surprised to learn like these different facets about his life, especially about, you know, him like making his own costumes and dressing up. Like a lot of his colleagues were like, I did not know that side of Rick whatsoever. So, you know, we're all sort of this, we all sort of have this duality in our life, but Rick had many different facets of his life that he only showed to certain people. And the more I dug into that, the more I realized like, but well, this is a person who, who only showed different parts of himself to certain people for certain reasons. And I was never trying to answer like the why behind that. It was just because it was like just a, a, like a matter of, again, it was like a matter of fact to him. Like he just, he had this sort of genius level brain. And that's what I realized. That was a big surprising thing to me. It was like, oh, this person had this genius level brain. He wrote some of the first pieces of code that we all still benefit from. He wrote Microsoft Works, like some of the, like the one of the, everything, a, a piece of software everyone still uses today. So it was like these little bits of information that would drop. I'm like, oh my God, he did that. Um, it's just, it's like an endless list of, of accomplishments. And what do you hope that people who see this documentary, especially the LGBTQIA plus community will take away from knowing Rick's story now? What I hope for the, what I hope for, what I hope from this film that the community can take away from is uh, a recognition of Rick, but also the essence of the film and of life is, is death is not the end. And your contributions to this world can cascade on for decades. And Rick is such an inspiration. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for sharing the documentary. And just one last thing, I'd just love to know if you have any future projects coming up to hint at us with. I do. I'm working on a TV series called There's a Light That Never Goes Out. Uh, it's about a story. It's a story about uh, growing up gay in Milwaukee in the late 80s. Um, and I'm also working on a film about... Uh, one of the first people to die of AIDS in small town, Texas in 1983. And I can't say too much about it right now, but um, it's, I feel like it's going to be uh, very thoughtful and uh, thought provoking. 
Well, thank you so much. This has been so great. Thank you for sharing everything with me and coming on today. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Like this video? Follow us for more.